Hey, good Friday morning, everybody. Bam Weather Meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a long-range forecast update. Guys, I hope you all are having a fantastic start to your day. Updated forecast today as we work throughout the rest of August and into the start of September, and the trend in the pattern drivers has been warmer and warmer, as has the trend in the model data over the past couple of days. And so we'll talk about that. How long is summer going to linger on as we work into the start of the, uh, the meteorology fall, if you will? heading over the next month. Wanted to start here because this continues to be a story that pops up more and more. I'm seeing more talk about it. The overnight lows, how warm they've been, the cloudy days in some spots with some of the moisture that's been going on. And I think that this continues to be a theme as we work over the next several weeks. We've got record-breaking warm lows likely into tomorrow morning. You can see mid-70s all the way up into the upper Midwest, upper 70s for lows in parts of the central and the southern plains. Uh, while not Every day ahead, we'll see record-breaking warm lows. We will continue with the lows being very elevated, especially for the Midwest and into the Ohio Valley and uh, the southern and central plains. And so uh, this continues to be a topic of conversation. We'll have a little bit more detail on where maybe some concern is growing with the combination of elevated lows, at times some excessive moisture, and areas we need we may need to watch for some crop stress. Huh? Because again, we have been getting some chatter, some pictures in from a couple of spots. Not everywhere is perfect right now uh, with the top end yield potential. And so again, we will talk about that in a little bit more detail here in a moment. We take a look at the general pattern though over the next two weeks. You can see it's warm in the short term. It's warm into the week two time frame. Widespread above normal temperatures likely across much of the ag belt as we go throughout the third week of August. Would watch out for some cooler trends across the far northwest plains, Canadian prairies. Data in general has been too warm in this region, I would say pretty much all summer long. And with that as well, we'll likely see moisture opportunities. In the short term, the heaviest rains will likely be across parts of the Midwest from northeast Kansas, northern Missouri, northwest Illinois, the southern and central part of Wisconsin, and into the eastern half of Iowa. Could see several inches of rain across eastern Iowa and into northwestern Illinois. Uh, let me see if I can pull up here a slightly better image of that because, uh, again, you know, when you start talking about three, four inches of rain, that moisture is going to hang around for a while. It takes a while to evaporate that out. And with the very warm, elevated lows, uh, you know, that's just a lot of, uh, of moisture that the crops are going to be dealing with and not a lot of time to air them out overnight. We're just not getting uh, these situations where we get lows uh, to kind of relieve some of the, the heat stress in these regions. And so if we take a look here, um, we zoom out so we can take a look here at the rainfall table at the bottom, you can see a widespread area of two to four inches of rain. Northern Missouri, eastern Iowa, northwest Illinois could even be some locally higher totals in there uh, into eastern Iowa and, and in western parts of Illinois. A lot of corn in that area. So something to keep in mind there. Now, it won't be quite as active in the short term uh, across the Ohio Valley uh, and into the western plains, but I do think some messy totals in there that maybe data not picking up on very well. In terms of the week two precipitation pattern, with this big ridge continuing to settle in and build in, this is kind of going to be the corridor in here where your best moisture is going to be. Likely not going to be as active across the central plains and into the Ohio Valley. And on top of that, we're going to need to watch for the risk of tropical activity up the East Coast, which historically would be a drier risk for the Eastern Ag Belt. And if we take a look at just how things average out into the week two time frame guys we can see here not as active now i don't think it's bone dry i do think especially earlier in the period there are some moisture opportunities but you know i don't think that we are nearly as active as you know what we have been for parts of the eastern ag belt as we go through the middle part of august but still continuing to be active across the northern plains upper midwest i would watch out for some wetter trends in parts of iowa and nebraska as well in the week two period. Taking a look at temperatures and the overall evolution ahead, you can see we will at times see some of these cold fronts to work into the northwestern and the western plains, but then the warmth comes right back. We really never truly see any kind of a cool shot of air in the eastern ag belt. And by the time we get into the middle part of the week two timeframe, 16th, 17th, 18th of, a, of the month ahead of another front, 
much above normal temperatures in a widespread fashion, likely across the vast majority of the ag belt. And then really the warmth will just hang around as we go throughout this period. Again, I would watch out data probably not picking up on it for some kind of a cold front in this region around the 18th of the month or so. Uh, that's pretty much where they've been dropping in, but uh, all things considered, the warm pattern will persist. In terms of the tropics, here's a look at what we are monitoring. Based off the ensemble data right now and where the Bermuda High is, the most likely region for development is off the East Coast. That being said, Given the strength of the Bermuda High throughout the season, I would not 100% be shocked to see a westward tick back in the data. So I want to continue to monitor the Florida and the southeast coast as we work throughout this 15th to 21st time frame for potential tropical activity. Again, right now, this is the most likely area. But I, you're not out of the woods if you are in the yellow shaded area, at least not yet. Still need to monitor that moving forward. In terms of the overall pattern, as we work throughout the rest of the middle part of August and into the latter part of the month, warmer than normal, as we talked about. If there are shots of cooler air to cross the far northwestern part of the country into the northwest plains, increase tropical risk likely across the southeast part of the country and off the east coast. Now, in terms of the pattern driver, as we go throughout the rest of August and into September, moving into MJO phases three or two, three, and four potentially as we work over the next several weeks. Now, data kind of trying to stall things out here in phase three. I'm a little bit skeptical that it completely stops there. I do think it slows down, but I do think that we can see more phase four as we work into the end of August and into September. In fact, if you actually look at the tropical forcing maps, a lot of similarities to the MJO Phase 4 signal heading into late August. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a look, we also have a weaker than normal global wind. We're back down below minus one standard deviation right now. MJO Phase 3 it favors the widespread warmer than normal temperatures. Again, the only difference I see ahead versus this is the warmth is a tick further south and east. All things considered, it has the idea pretty well. As we work into phase four to end August, you can see overall it still continues to favor the widespread above normal risk. It's not as warm in the east, but if you look at how that then evolves into September, you get the picture much above normal temperatures based off of this setup for the eastern part of the country heading into the month of September. And if there are fronts further to the north, and to the west and so you know you blend those ideas together and i actually think you we see something very similar to what happened in 2021 it's been one of our top running analogs throughout this month i think this shows the idea very well of how things will likely evolve it even has more equal chances down here across the southeast part of the country where there's probably more tropical activity in terms of some of our other pattern drivers we look at the north pacific it also favors generally a warmer south and east United States. And if we look at our global winds alone, look how warm of a signal this is. If anything, this would indicate even more of a warmer risk that by the very end of August and to start September, there could be even more of a notable hot period across parts of the eastern ag belt. So that will need to be something that we keep a close eye on and fine tune as we get a little bit closer as well. In terms of precipitation, what I will note, top analogs, MJO analogs, more variable in terms of precipitation and a lot of that has to do with tropical activity where tropical systems form how strong they are obviously we can't fine tune until we get closer but they will have a major impact on the precipitation pattern going throughout this time frame here's the global wind signal it's wetter across the midwest really where it's been wetter it's drier across the lower ohio valley tennessee valley east coast but if you get a tropical system to come up here then Everything is going to be shoved west. The Midwest would turn drier, the Ohio Valley would turn wetter, the East Coast would turn wetter. And so I, I want to really caution us about precipitation because the confidence is a little bit lower. Now, we can only work with what we've got. There's no way to know exactly where tropical activity is going to develop for sure at this distance. The general idea is kind of along and east of the East Coast. And if we factor this in, Along with one of our other top analogs, 2010, you can start to see a little bit of a theme. Probably continues to stay active across the Midwest. How about that? It's where it's been active all summer. Maybe a higher, drier risk across the Ohio Valley and the Western Plains as we go throughout this time frame. 
we take a look at just the next two weeks, it actually resembles the pattern ahead. And if you look at what these analogs have showed for temperatures, it's similar to the next two weeks as well. And so it makes sense that our pattern heading through this period would likely resemble some of how the next two weeks evolves. And so with all that in mind, here's our temperature outlook. Again, uh, overall, a warmer than normal pattern. We'll watch this area in here to maybe trend even warmer towards the end of the period, something to keep an eye on. But all things considered, it's a similar pattern to the next two weeks with warmth dominating the pattern at warmer than normal temperatures. Is it extreme heat? I don't necessarily think that is the case, but it's certainly a consistently warmer than normal pattern with elevated low temperatures continuing to be an issue. In terms of precipitation here, we tried to match this up to the analogs that we showed in our global wind signal and similarities to the, to the next couple of weeks. So more active across the northern plains, upper Midwest, not as active across the western plains and into the Ohio Valley. We'll need to watch how tropical systems evolve, however, along the east coast, which is the forecast risk note. Variability due to tropical cyclones. Very different outcome if this hurricane goes here versus if it comes into the Gulf through here. And so that will just have to be something we monitor as we get a little bit closer. Last thing before we go, I do want to note this. There is the risk, and we are already seeing reports of it, of some crop stress due to the very warm overnight lows and at times some of the excessive rains. We talked about the excessive rains in the short term in this area. You combine that with very warm overnight lows and you can start to see some problems arise. Again, we've seen chatter about it. Further to the east, while it's not as active, the very warm overnight lows continue. In fact, this region in here has been having one of the warmest summers on record in regards to overnight lows. And so I do want to highlight with the persistent pattern ahead, there could be some stress in here now through early September related to this type of a signal. So something we continue to want to highlight and keep a close eye on ahead. Guys, that's all I have for today's forecast. If you have questions, as always, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great weekend.